फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज सॉल्व वन प्रॉब्लम ऑन स्टडी स्टेट हीट फ्लो इन इन्फाइनेट स्लैब विथ इंटरनल हीट जनरेशन वेन द सरफेस टेम्परेचर ऑन टू साइड्स आर डिफरंट वी वील रीड वॉट इज द गिवन क्वेश्चन ए फ्लैट प्लेट ऑफ स्टील विथ के इज इक्वल टू फिफ्टी फोर वैट पर मीटर केलवीन वन पॉइंट ट्वेंटी फाइव सेंटीमीटर थीक एंड टेन सेंटीमीटर वाइड जनरेट्स हीट एट द रेट ऑफ एट थाउजंड किलो वैट पर मीटर क्यूब टेम्परेचर ऑफ वन सरफेस ऑफ प्लेट इज एटी डिग्री सेल्सियस एंड दैट ऑफ अदर इज नाइंटी डिग्री सेल्सियस कैलक्युलेट फर्स्ट पोजिशन एंड मैग्निट्यूड ऑफ मैक्जिमम टेम्परेचर सेकंड फ्लो ऑफ हीट फ्रॉम ईच सरफेस पर मीटर लेंथ In previous video, we have seen that temperature distribution equation when the temperature at both the surfaces are same. In this video, we have to find out the position and magnitude of maximum temperature when the surface temperatures are different. Let us first understand what is the given data. थर्मल कंडक्टिविटी ऑफ द मटेरियल के इज गिवन 54 फोर वैट पर मीटर केलवीन देन द थिकनेस इज गिवन सो दिस थिकनेस वी विल रेफर हियर एज ए एल दैट इज लेंथ 1.25 पॉइंट ट्वेंटी फाइव सेंटीमीटर सो वी हैव टू राइट हियर एल इज इक्वल टू वन पॉइंट ट्वेंटी फाइव सेंटीमीटर बट स्टैंडर्ड यूनिट इज मीटर सो विच इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट वन ट्वेंटी फाइव मीटर देन विड दिस टेन सेंटीमीटर दैट इज जीरो पॉइंट वन मीटर then heat generated 8000 kilowatt per meter cube but the standard unit is watt per meter cube so we will rewrite this 8000 into 10 raised to 3 watt per meter cube now the temperature at both the surfaces are given so for one surface it is 80 degree celsius and for the other surface it is 90 degree celsius so we have to mention that now how to find out the position and magnitude of maximum temperature now in previous video we have seen that we have to use the poisson's equation but in that question it is given that the heat source is located at the center so that was the given condition but here no any condition is given so we will simply assume that the heat is flowing from this first surface to the other surface and it will cover the total length l and l is equal to 0.125 meter so this is the direction of x and in this direction heat will flow now at this initial surface or this first surface we can say that this is the direction of x so at the end point x is equal to l and at the initial point x is equal to 0 and at this end point x is equal to l and that is equal to 0.125 meter so this is assumption that is important we will consider here the direction that is towards the right hand side now we have to follow the same procedure as we have to use the poisson's equation and we have to take the integration so what is the poisson equation so poisson equation is d square t by dx square plus qg by k is equal to 0 now we will integrate this with respect to x so when we take integration then dt by dx is equal to now this qg by k i will transfer to the right hand side so it will become minus qg by k now here is integration with respect to x so it will become minus qg by k x plus c1 so this c1 is constant of integration i will give here equation number 1 now we will again integrate this with respect to x that is t is equal to minus qg by k now this x is x square by 2 and this c1 we have to take c1 x and again we will take second constant of integration that is c2 so here is this equation so this is the equation number 2 now we will apply the boundary condition because here we have to find out the position and magnitude of maximum temperature within this x is equal to 0 and x is equal to l so when we apply this boundary condition these two terms are unknown that is c1 and c2 and we will find out the values of c1 and c2 so the same process 
procedure that we have to apply as the previous video and in previous video there was derivation but here we are going to solve the problem now here for the what is the first boundary condition so first boundary condition is that when x is equal to 0 then temperature t is equal to t1 now we have to find out the value so when we put x is equal to 0 and temperature t is equal to t1 now put this value in equation 2 so put these values put in equation 2 so what will happen we have to put here x is equal to 0 this will term will become 0 this term will also become 0 and t is equal to t1 so c2 is equal to t1 now this c2 is equal to t1 is important now again we will take second boundary condition so what is the second boundary condition x is equal to l so at x is equal to l t is equal to t2 and c2 is equal to t1 so we have to put all these in equation 2 so put all these values in equation 2 so what will happen t is equal to t2 so we have to write here t2 is equal to minus qg by k now instead of x we have to put l that is l square by 2 plus c1 l plus t1 so c2 is equal to t1 so here only one unknown term that is c1 so we have to find out so first i will transfer this t1 to the left hand side that it will become t2 minus t1 now this minus qg by k l square by 2 will become plus when we transfer to the other side and which is equal to c1 l so c1 is equal to t2 minus t1 divided by l because this is the one term t2 minus t1 so both we have to give here and again this l that means uh, l square by 2 so it will l l will getting cancelled and it will become qg l divided by 2k so this is the value of c1 so these two values are important now we will find out the position of maximum temperature that means we have to find out at which location there is the maximum temperature so the location of maximum temperature we will consider that distance from this initial surface that will be xm so i will mention here so this is approximate i will show here this will be xm so this distance xm that we have to find out from x is equal to 0 so when the temperature t is equal to 2 max that is when maximum temperature is there then at this temperature dt by dx is equal to 0 so we have to put the values of c1 and c2 in equation number 1 because equation number 1 is for the dt by dx and we have to show this equation that is the value of dt by dx is equal to 0. So dt by dx is equal to qg by k in the bracket l by 2 minus x plus t2 minus t1 by l. Now for maximum temperature we have to show that dt by dx is equal to 0 because this is the rule and when this t is equal to 2 max then t max then we can say that x is equal to xm that is capital X to the base m. So we have to put here x that is xm then we have to show dt by dx is equal to 0 then this is the equation. Qg that is 8000 into 10 raised to 3 divided by 54 in the bracket 0 0.0125 by 2 minus xm bracket complete plus t2 minus t1 that is 90 minus 80 divided by 0 0.0125. So we will solve this. So left hand side is 0. Now we will solve this. That is we will multiply this inside. Then 925.92. Again we will multiply this with xm. That is minus 148148 into xm plus 800. So when we solve this here is only one unknown term. That is xm. So xm is equal to 0 0.01164 meter. So we can say that the position of xm is 0 0.01164. So we will approximately select one point and this point will be at a distance of this 0 0.01164 meter. So we can say that when t is equal to 2 max then x is equal to we have to take this xm that is 0 0.01164 meter. Now we will find out maximum temperature. So for that we will put the values of C1 and C2 in equation number 2. So what is the equation number 2? It is for temperature T. So T is equal to minus QG by K X square by 2 plus C1 X plus C2. So this C1 value we will put here T2 minus T1 by L plus QG L by 2K. So 
outside this bracket we have to put here x and for c2 we will put here as a t1. Now again we will move for the next that is we will simplify this we will multiply here x inside the bracket. So here is the equation. Now again if we observe this here qg by 2k is the common term. So we have to keep we have to take as a common. So here we have to concentrate on these two. So if I take qg by 2k as a common then here is minus x square and here is lx. So inside the bracket we will write lx minus x square plus we will continue t2 minus t1 by l into x plus t1. Now when t is equal to t max that is at maximum temperature the distance x is equal to xm and that is equal to 0 0.01164 meter. So we have to put this value that is instead of x we have to put this value L is equal to 0 0.0125 that we have to put and all the other values are known. So we will take here qg by 2k that is uh, t is equal to t max. So 8000 into 10 raised to 3 divided by 2 into 54 inside the bracket L into x that is 0 0.0125 into x 0 0.01164 minus 0 0.01164 square bracket complete plus t2 minus t1. So t2 minus t1 is 10 divided by L that is 0 0.0125 multiplied by x that is 0 0.01164 plus t1 that is plus 18. Now we will Simplify this so here is the answer 0 0.7415 plus 9.312 plus 80 which is equal to 90.0535 degree Celsius. So we will show this in the diagram. So this xm is equal to 0 0.01164. So here x is equal to 0. Here x is equal to 0 0.0125. So it is nearer to this that is 0 0.01164. So we will approximately draw, draw here one line. And temperature is slightly above 90. So here is 80 and here is 90. So we will show here as a maximum temperature T max. Now we will draw here one graph. So this is the curve and here is the maximum temperature. Now we will move to the second question. We will find out what is the flow of heat from each surface. So if we observe here is the thickness L and at x is equal to 0 this is the initial surface that is first surface and at x is equal to L this is the other surface. So I will show this surface that is if we observe here with the help of this uh, red marker I have shown this is the width and this is the height. So I will uh, show here again so here is the width here is also this width and here is the height. So this rectangle is nothing but the first surface. Now what about the second surface? So second surface is here. So here is height, width, then here is also height and here is width. So this is the second surface. So from this surface we have to find out what is the flow of heat. So for this first surface we will show here flow of heat will be Q1 and for the second surface I will show the flow of heat will be Q2. But before that we will first find out what is the total heat generated. So total heat generated that is equal to Qg multiplied by volume. Because this Qg value that is mentioned in the question that is per unit volume per unit time. So here Qg that is 8000 into 10 raised to 3 multiplied by volume. So what is the volume? So volume is length multiplied by width multiplied by height. Now this length and width is known but height is not known. So we will take here uh, length multiplied by width multiplied by h. So length and width we have to mention in meter and q is equal to 10,000 h. So we can say that q divided by h that is equal to that is the heat generated per unit height or per unit or length that is we will take here which is equal to 10,000 watt per meter. So this is the total heat generated. Now we will find out heat flow from the first surface. Now this first surface is at a distance x is equal to 0. Now for this calculation for q1 we know that this heat is flowing with the help of the conduction process. 
so for conduction what is the formula so for conduction heat flow by conduction q is equal to minus k a dt by dx but here x is equal to 0 we will put here the value of dt by dx. So when we put the values of c1 and c2, then what is this dt by dx? So this dt by dx that is nothing but the equation number 1. So when in equation 1 we put the uh, values of c1 and c2, then it will become, so minus k we have to continue as it is. Then we will put here the bracket, then inside the second bracket we will take here, qg by k in the bracket l by 2 minus x bracket complete plus t2 minus t1 by l second bracket complete. So this minus k is common for this both the terms. Now we will first solve this inside the bracket. Now we will put the value. So minus k that is minus 54 multiplied by area a. So for the first surface area a is for this width multiplied by height. So width is 0 0.1 and height h is unknown. So we have to take as it is. Now we will put all the values qg by k that is 8000 into 10 raised to 3 by 54 in the bracket 0 0.0125 by 2 minus x is 0. So we have to take here 0 plus t2 minus t1 that is 10 divided by l that is 0 0.0125. So first we will solve this inside the inside bracket. So minus 54 into 0 0.1 into h as it is. Now in the bracket this answer is for this first term the answer is 925.92 plus for the second term it is 800. So again we have to add this and we have to multiply with this. So it is minus 9320H. So this H is unknown. So we will shift to the right hand side. So Q1, is, Q1 by H is equal to minus 9320 Watt per meter. So this is the heat flow from the first surface. Now why here is the minus sign? So negative sign indicates that the heat is flowing in the opposite direction. Because our assumption is that heat will flow in the towards the right hand side direction. But for Q1, heat will flow towards the left hand side direction. So we will show here. This Q1 will flow in this opposite direction. Now how to find out Q2 that is the heat flow from the second surface. So we know that this total heat generated Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2. So we will find out this Q2 is equal to Q minus Q1 that is this 10,000 minus 9,320. So this second term, uh, so if we observe here this Q1 by H is minus 9320 but we have to refer only this magnitude because this minus sign is for the direction. So we can say that 10,000 minus we have to take this only magnitude that is I will write here Q2 is equal to 10,000 minus 9320. So here what is the value? So here is 0, 8 then here is 6. So 680 is the value. Then this 680 watt per meter that will be the value and it will, it is having positive sign. So it will flow towards the right hand side direction. So we have to show here this Q2 will flow towards this right hand side direction.